you weren't taken out of there that evening? When did no, you leave? No. I felt that we should have been taken out because according to the orders of Mayor Bloomberg, everybody was supposed to get out on Monday. But the administrators felt that we could perhaps make it without having to leave the building. And so the next morning, the first two hours, I was up at about eight, nine. We realized that we were in a serious situation, but how serious, we didn't know. As the morning wore on, the firemen came, and I believe, if I recall correctly, police was there, but the firemen definitely, and they said, you people got no time to lose. You must get out immediately. This building is not safe. So I said to him, may I ask you one question, sir? I said, what about all my belongings, which include a great deal of material that is precious to me? Will I get it back when I come back? And the rest right. of us the same way. He said, I can't guarantee you. But he said, you are lucky that you are living on the second floor, not first. Because the first floor is totally flooded. The second floor, third and fourth are four floors there have a very good chance of retaining everything in good order. And that's how we left, immediately, without taking anything. Anything except what we wore on our what we had on, what we had on our bodies. And we left. And I said, where are we going? He said, we're going to Brooklyn. I said, Brooklyn's a big place. Where in Brooklyn are you taking us to? He says, I'm taking you to the armory. Okay. We came to the armory. We looked at the faces of the people that greeted us, full of smiles, anxious to help. Just a lovely reception. I think I put down in the letter beyond description. And day and night they would come over, can I help you? Do you have any difficulty in going to the bathroom? I won't go with you. And so on and so forth. And the food was good and the activities were very healthy. The children from schools were sending us letters. I hope you have a house soon. And uh, there were services. Uh, for Jewish people, Friday night, for Catholic people, another day, on Sunday, I guess. And uh, all a type of activity that was sort of interesting, creative. They had a sense for, for, creative, for, for creative engagement of people I've been through quite a bit. So, and so we stayed there for two weeks and three days. And before, I le before we left, I said, I must express appreciation. So the young lady who was with me said to me, as I already told you just a few, few moments ago, you, in addition to expressing appreciation, you have to tell them who you are. So I started out the first paragraph. I said I was looking on the night, in the middle of the night, and saw the waters rising wrathfully and forcefully. And then I wrote the association reminded me of January in the year of nine, all the way back to 1935. What happened in that year? We, our family, that is my mother and my siblings, were on a boat, Polish boat to the United States to join our father. And the ocean was raging. My younger sister went from bed to bed, giving everybody water to drink, asking if she can help. And by association, I thought of that as I looked at the advising storm. And then I went on to give a little descriptive material, which people responded to very beautifully. Namely, I recall the night when we left the shtetl. The shtetl is a small town. Right. And this is a small town near Bialystok, where we lived. The name of it is Yashinovka. So 
I, I wrote, <laughs> it's, it's tears of laughter. I wrote that my grandmother, Salka of blessed memory, was lamenting as we were leaving. And she said, how can it be that we're taking human beings, live, wonderful human beings, and exchanging them for letters? And she unfortunately did not know how to read or write. <clears throat> and my uncle, who was considered the family's advisor in all kinds of difficult situations, was shouting to us, Kinderlach, children, America is not Yashinovka. Yashinovka was a very small town, everybody knew everybody else and so forth. He said, America is not Yashinovka, get a hold of each other's hands. Make sure you hold up to one another, nobody gets lost. And then I went on to say that, yes, the ocean was raging, but we were still, we were full of optimism that we will make it okay and meet our father who had been living in the United States for six years approximately before us. And we did. And uh, I didn't write much about my life in the United States, but since you're here, I can tell you that the United States and my father was a great patriot. He said in, in Poland, when he went to the post office, he had to take off his yarmulke. He was a religious man, Rabbi Simon Eisenstein. And here he says, I'm a free man, I can behave as I please, and I feel very grateful to this land. And essentially, we all felt in the course of time that way. Very patriotic and very, very grateful. Because I started going to school, I did not know one word of English. Four years later, I was graduated as a valedictorian of the high school class. The teachers didn't even, oh, I, I took a course in English from a principal of an elementary school the first summer that I was here. And, and I said to her, you have to get paid. She said, I only want $10 for the whole summer. That was very, very big. And she was extremely nice to me. She afterwards took me to the principal, introduced me to the principal in the high school, and that is what followed. And when I was graduated from high school, I was a valedictorian in my class. And don't you have a PhD? Yeah. And what is your PhD in? Well, I, I went on to Temple University. I taught children privately, and I taught them also collectively in groups. And the family was in poor condition, but I made a living for myself, but had the full support of, the, of my parents to the extent that they could support me. And so I went to Temple University, traveled from Vineland, New Jersey, where my father was a rabbi, to Philadelphia every day. And my sister, who is no longer alive, also traveled with me. She would go as far as uh, Glassboro State Teachers College. And I would go to Temple University all the way in Philadelphia. <coughs> and going back and forth every day was quite a job. And after a while, I started to think of still continuing my own education. And that's when I had a, made a determination to continue at Columbia University in New York. At Columbia University, I, taught, I took language courses at Columbia itself, methodology and education at Teachers College. So it was a combination of the two, and I went all the way to receiving a PhD in educational research, and my research was based, in essence, on what I experienced myself as a child in the school in Yashinovka, which was a, a new phenomenon in Jewish life, because for the first time, Poland became a republic and granted rights to the Jewish people to develop their own school system, newspapers, publish books, etc. It was a book of relative democratic life. It, it's 
We feel cut off from the world. The first thing I look for in the morning is a newspaper. Mine like yours, you need the paper. How I mean, we can go out, but now that we are, we are allowed to go outside and sit on a bench. But in order to go, let's say, to a store, you have to cover quite a bit of territory in order so to reach So you have one. a television that you can watch the news? Right here. So that's how you heard about the shooting? Well, not here. That's how you, you yeah, know. here. Yeah. In here. Yeah. Well, that's how well, I heard about it yesterday morning. On the and news and followed, television. Then I followed it up in the post. And the, uh, so these, are these the only clothes that you have since the hurricane? The or clothes you? that I have, I was wearing a skirt and a blouse. But how did this you get one, these clothes? This one I got in the armory. So they, do people come here and drop clothes off and let people pick their clothes, mm -hmm. like donation clothes? Here? No, here I don't see that. So you don't have very many clothes with you? No, only what I picked up the armor, which is my dress, and what I was dressed in when I left the bell harbor was a skirt, a blouse, and a, oh, the, I had a jacket. I had a nice jacket with a zipper. But the, I think somebody must have come into the armory and pretended that he works for, for the armory. And he said to me, give us sure whatever you need to have washed. We'll bring it back to you tomorrow. And I gave them a couple things, but among them was what was, what was what's, uh, regrettable that I don't have it back, is the uh, jacket. So instead of the jacket, they gave me this. But we're getting along. I mean, everybody's in the same condition. Right? I was never frightened and scary. No, here. No. You're among people that are. The only thing that I objected to as I came in and they asked, they said, you cannot go to eat anything in the cafeteria unless you have your photo taken first. I said, why should I have my photo taken? I said, I'm a person of honesty and integrity. It makes me feel insecure. So she convinced me that it's necessary because of the elements here and if a person gets lost or whatever, yeah. it's for our protection. It's for security. So I said, okay, yeah. take it. So after that, I think they have tried to be kinder to us. After the, lawyer, after the lawyers came, I think they tried to be kinder to us. Mm -hmm. Not that they were unkind before, I wouldn't say that. But they function in terms of the way they have been functioning for years. Mm -hmm. And when you go cafeteria, let's say, has everybody here. It has people who have been living here for years and years in the institution, coming and eating together with us. In other words, we interact. You don't know who is who. We interact. Did of course, you make you a friend here that you like, that you trust? Another friend here that you... I, some of them, especially after reading some of my letter from the Times, have become, a, have sort of sought my friendship, I feel. And... Uh, and they, they, they sort of were beginning to value what I have to say about matters. And I said, I don't want to understate and I don't want to overstate. And I don't want to be in a conflict situation with this institution. I'm just questioning a way of analyzing why we, are, we find ourselves here. Why what, wasn't a search made that would accommodate people in another facility like uh, Bill Harbor Manor for the time for te on a temporary basis? And she told me, a lawyer told me, she says, you got a point. You got a I said, there are younger people among us too. I said, supposing that younger person goes afterwards out to seek a job. And they asked him, well, how did you fare in the, in the storm? 
and then what, what, where were you after the storm? And, and the, the person replying the states that he or she had been here. I don't think it's a good reference. 